Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rashi. I am a PGY1 resident in internal medicine. And on this channel, I create content around the USMLEs and document my life as an IMG in medicine and outside medicine. So I recently wrote my step three and I thought it would be a great idea to come on here and do an old school sit down talk video about how exactly I prepared for step three, the resources that I used, the timeline I used, and uh, basically the mistakes that I made that I feel I learned from, and I would do differently if I were to start preparing for this exam now. And I ho really hope that this video is helpful because I couldn't find a whole lot of content on the internet based around step three. So yeah, I really hope this is helpful and let's get started. So pattern wise, step three is a two day exam day one is a seven hour long test which is just multiple choice questions that are like your step one and step two testing your the knowledge of your basic sciences applied in a clinical scenario and then day two is a mix of multiple choice questions and uh, ccs cases which is case simulations so and that's nine hours pretty long test and in the beginning i was very intimidated by ccs cases but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple and I'll break down how exactly are they patterned, how are they graded, and how can you practice and score the most marks in these cases. Now for resources, I didn't use a whole lot of resources. I actually used three. Okay, maybe like just four resources because I was giving my step three in the first half of my intern year, like PGY one year, and uh, yes. I was just forced to be efficient. The first resource that I used was UWorld. That's pretty basic and the way that I went about doing UWorld was trying to do a block a day. Sometimes it was difficult but aiming for ideally a block a day. I believe UWorld has like 2000 questions for step 3 so it's not a lot. There were like 4000 for uh, in step 2 so that's a relief. I tried solving UWorld and then I marked the questions that I didn't know. Uh, made some flashcards for images like derm, path, histo, uh, some radio stuff and basically spotters and I also made some notes, not too many, in new world as well to revise like quick points and the stuff or the concepts that I was weak in. Uh, that was my new world part. The second part and a very very important part is first aid. Now I use first aid for step one because new world doesn't cover a lot of day one stuff which is going to be essentially half of your exam. So for covering those basics, especially if you if there's a lot of gap between you writing your step one, step two, and then giving your step three, I believe reading and revising for from first aid would be a great idea. And it's a pretty comprehensive book, but it's also very dense. So it might take you some time to get through all topics, at least stuff that uh, I felt really was important and high yield was uh, pharma a lot of it that's tested heavily, micro stuff, those classifications of organisms and then antimicrobials tying in with like micropharma both. Um, what else? Statistics, so biostats is a major, major part of day one. So I covered my basics from first aid first and then practiced in new world and then I'll come to what I did later. And then third resources I use was ccscases.com clinical cases. I didn't do any cases from new world. So I just used, uh, went on to there, there are about 200 cases and ideally if you have the time doing 200 would be excellent but I didn't really have the time to go through all 200. I did the top one, 100 and I sorted them on the basis of high yield they were and just went through like top 100 with an aim to do like 10 cases a day. It didn't take me that long to just finish the 100. Initially, the learning curve was definitely tough because it's super weird if you've never, if you've always uh, tested in a multiple choice question sort of a setting because that's how my brain is wired to test. So if I see the options, I'm going to know what to write. But in CCS cases, you kind of are graded on the basis of um, your steps as well. Like for example, solving a maths question where you get marks for each step. So you essentially get marks for ordering appropriate labs, imaging, and then other testing for ruling out things and then also treatment and then in addition to that another layer is healthcare maintenance stuff so like vaccines, screenings, counseling, social work which is actually a super important part of overall patient management and I'm realizing now that I've started residency 
but um, yeah if it were me a few months ago before i started residency i don't think i would have thought of it as such a big part of it but yes that is in the last couple minutes of your ccs cases that is tested something that really helped me and a friend of mine suggested was writing all the investigations like basic labs imaging stuff on a single piece of paper and using that as a reference and if you order it enough number of times you get pretty quick and then it becomes muscle memory stuff like cbc bmp ekgs some sort of x-ray ultrasound that you are essentially bound to get on every single patient just order it right away um, as long as it's not invasive you're not going to lose marks on the basis of it and it helps you uh, finish your cases quicker so that's one tip that i would say really really helped me and then i had a uh, organ system specific tests as well so if it was a cardiology case i knew that like ordering troponins um echo hose a cardiology consult stuff like that was important if it was an abdomen case then different things cns cases wise different investigations so if you have a layout in your head uh it's very easy to score high on ccs cases and i feel that really gives you an opportunity to bump up your score if you really practice ccs cases well because on the basis of the hnp uh, on the basis of the little question stem that they give you you can pretty much make out the diagnosis at least for me for the 10 cases that i had from the five sentences of history that they gave me i knew what case it was but you are not just but you have to remember to not be hasty and really go through all the investigation find out all the results and then order appropriate management for them so that's that and then the fourth resource i used is something that i've talked about extensively in every single one of my videos it's divine intervention podcast it's a free resource where divine does um these small episodes and he covers different topics i did all of his high yield ones and then towards the end i did stuff like vaccine screening and just essentially brush up on my knowledge uh that i kind of had forgotten because i hadn't revised in such a long time i also really love divine's biostats episodes and biostats is pretty heavily tested on day 1 you'll get like a few questions in each block so in his episodes i found that he really explains it in a way that you internalize those concepts because they're not testing your mathematical abilities it's really just testing how well you understand the concepts of biostatistics so yeah do them really well i know biostats can be a little challenging but once you really like get those concepts down it will be like super easy and then there's another episode uh, that divine talks about it's a drug ad episode so just go over it it's a, i think it's a 10 minute episode but the way he approaches drug ads was super helpful and i think that really helped me get at least a few drug ad questions right since they're pretty lengthy so those are the only resources that i used now for testing i practiced i gave one nbme and i did the two uw essays nbme was definitely closer to the real exam uw essays were kind of just similar to day 2 and then nbme also has practice ccs cases like a few so you can go over them now timeline wise uh, it really depends on what stage of the journey you are on and what score you are aiming for for me i was doing it like i said in the first year of residency and i didn't have a whole bunch of time like for dedicated preparation but i was still kind of aiming for above a 90th percentile which i thought would be decent uh and it was doable so ideally i would say 3 months to 2 and a half months of pre dedicated and the rest dedicated and one mistake that i did that i really wish that I hadn't done and had had i known better was giving my step 3 uh in residency and not close to step 2 so had i given it closer to my step 2 i would have already studied for the exam and then i would just have to do the ccs cases and just write the exam it would have saved me months of preparation and just the extra st- stress of taking an exam with a full time job uh, other benefits of just giving step 3 even before you apply could be just a boost to your cv and Im- a possible improvement in your score if your step 2 score is kind of on the lower percentile for the specialty that you're applying to and just new visa opportunities as well so yeah i really hope this was helpful um And if you have any more questions leave them in the comments I'll try my best to answer them and all the very best for your step 3 then bye